Hi, it's Kat Sturz from rockinyourpath.com, and this is another episode of Fast Action Friday, and I'm excited to uh, introduce <laughs> you to my special guest today, uh, one of my longtime uh, coaching clients who is gracious enough to let me tell everybody that he's one of my clients. Um, that's a confidential thing for the clients that want to remain that to be confidential. So if you have clients, uh, make sure you get your permission before you shout their name all over the place. <laughs> and it is John Morris uh, from Art from the Heart. And he's calling in all the way from Scotland today. Say hello to everybody. Hey, guys. How are we doing today? Hope you're having an absolutely super day and an awesome week. And we're going to do a real quick shout out to Cindy Freeman, who just joined us. It is Cindy's Cindy. birthday. So everybody give a silent clap to Cindy and wish her a happy, <laughs> happy birthday. birthday. Maybe Cindy. we'll pop her into a chair soon. John, tell everybody a little bit about how you got into the artistic side of things, yeah. because today we're talking about nurturing your creative side. Yeah, um, it was something that I'd always enjoyed and something that I'd had a passion for as a child. Um, my grandmother, who was Austrian, she loved to paint, and my family still puts it down to some form of uh, bloodline and connection there. Um, but really, I think when it kicked off for me was when I was out of work. I think people know the story. I was out of work when I was 17, and I sat there one day channel surfing, and I was watching Bob Ross and saw him paint, and literally, I'd never seen anything like this. Um, the bushy hair the, and <laughs> yeah, the, the big, you know, wild afro and everything else. And, um, you know, it, it was just incredible, just his gentle nature and just soulful paintings. And it came across, you know, just absolutely incredible. Um, so from that time, I started out painting more Japanese styles um, with like birds on the rocks and the Japanese uh, scribe and everything else. Um, and then just over the period of time, it really built into similar to what Bob Ross had done. And then uh, as I started studying more and more people, uh, the Thomas Kincaid's, the Chuck Pints, and so on and so on, um, you know, it really developed from there. But that's that's kind of the short version. On how yeah, I got short version. One of the things I remember most about watching Bob Ross mm -hmm. is he was the first person I ever saw paint with a palette knife. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I knew, I knew about finger painting and I knew yeah. about brush painting, but it never occurred to me that you could yeah. use something flat. And I always wondered how do they get such nice straight lines? And then it was like yeah. this huge light bulb went out. Cause um, back, in, especially in my high school days and my early twenties, I did do a lot of uh, watercolor paintings. <laughs> really? um, yeah, I did. And I gave <laughs> that up for writing, you know? All right. So you've got some, is it's, a, it's a talent in itself because it's so hard and it was so frustrating. But yeah, it, it is. It is. Uh, I found it um, very soothing. It was one of the yeah. things I did just when, for some alone time, quality alone time. Yeah. And we spent our summers out at a, at a waterfront uh, trailer park, you know, uh, seven of us crammed into this like 30 foot trailer <laughs> all summer long. So you spend a lot of time outside, you know? Yeah. So I take my pa my paints and I'd go down to the beach or out into the woods and just sit and, and paint. That's so I cool. like that. And I haven't done that a lot. The last picture I did was my little, um, my little reminder to remember to look at my webcam. <laughs> on my on my computer when yeah. I'm talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we wanna get to the fast action tips today. Yeah. So let me ask you, if people, I, I believe, and I think you do too, everybody has a little bit of creativity within them. Yeah. And some people are afraid or think that they have nothing to nurture, right? Yeah. So yeah. what would you suggest they do to nurture that creative side? The, the, the simplest and best way that I can say this is you got to start somewhere. You know, I didn't start where I am now. I started right at the very beginning. Um, and people often forget that, they, as you said, you know, they want to do something, but they're scared to try because they may make a mistake. I got news for you. Anyone that's a professional, anyone even does it for a hobby, you're going to make mistakes. That's how you learn. Um, you know, and, and that's, I suppose that's the simplest way of saying it. You know, you've got to start somewhere. You research how, you know, what tools do I need? Um, whose style do I want to emulate? 
And then as time goes on, you start building your own style, but you've got to start somewhere. And sometimes it's just a case of putting paint on the paper, on the canvas, or on whatever medium you choose to paint on. Um, right, and, and make, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I've got kids at our youth group that, uh, that just, you know, they're not into painting as much, but they love to sketch. And some of the sketches that they put out there are phenomenal. And, just, and you can already tell that they're going to be something really, really special. But you've got to start yeah. somewhere. Definitely. Got to start I think somewhere. it's interesting that all my life, the, the one thing that I've always doodled are little daisies. <laughs> and it's no surprise that even today, my favorite flower is a Shasta daisy. Right. And I, that, I never made that connection until just now when you were talking yeah. about well, where, where do you start? You just kind of nurture it and let it go. Yeah. And it, we're not talking about art that has to be sold. I no. mean, you're an artist just yeah. and you're you're creative just by virtue of the fact of indulging in yeah. the creative side. It. Right. Yeah. I mean, oftentimes you find that people and this is the advice that I got when I was younger. On the one hand, it's good. On the other hand, it's bad. Um, the advice I got was you've got to paint what people want. Now, that's good, but if it isn't in your natural style and you can't do it, um, it's not that you can't do it, it's that you, you maybe it doesn't come to you as naturally as a landscape or something else. Um, it doesn't work for you. So you've got to paint what you enjoy. And that's, you know, that's what I've been trained with for the last 11 years. You've got to paint what you enjoy. And it's when people see you enjoying what you do, they enjoy it as well, usually. Um, if it's something really creative and it's really special, because they see the passion that you have for it, and it energizes them as well. It gets them excited and really passionate about it. Um, and that's you know something I always make sure, even now, as busy as I am, um, that I take the time to paint what I enjoy. I still love painting mountains. I still love painting the red blossom trees um, and the seascapes, the mountainscapes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for me, it's it's you know it's doing what I'm passionate about and bringing that into other people's viewpoints so they can be passionate and learn themselves. Um, and when they find out that I was home taught as well, then that opens up a whole new world for them in which they can say, well, if this guy can do it, then maybe I've got something that I can start with. And we're always, we always try to help people and do it as well. So, Exactly. And that goes across all the creative arts, whether it's painting or music or uh, writing, you know, it's very similar to the advice yeah. I give to people who are trying to improve their writing. All right. So here's the next one. What do I do if I feel I'm just not good enough? Compared to who, I think would be my nah. <laughs> would be the thing that I come back with. It, it's the dangerous thing, and I've had um, friends, clients, acquaintances, you know, all across the spectrum. Um, so you, you know, on one scale, I know that, that basically that thing to me, I'm not good enough um, to paint. I'm not good enough, you know, to write or to do whatever. And the thing that makes me so sad is because they're comparing it to other people. You know, I'm not as good as you. I'm not as good as Thomas Kincaid. Um, and it's it's something you've got to practice towards. But again, it's not something you should sit there and say, well, I need to be so-and-so. I need to do this. It's something you should do because you enjoy it. Um, and don't compare yourself to other people. It, yeah, I mean, now, <laughs> sounds really contradictory when I say this because I compare myself to Bob Ross. And Bob Ross for me, because mm -hmm. I had a clear view in my mind of what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to get to the standard of a Bob Ross. Many felt that I had surpassed that standard um, because then my work changed when I started looking at, as I said, Thomas Kincaid. Uh, Eugene Lushman is another one. Um, I think he's from Holland. And he does the most phenomenal cityscapes. Um, and for me, that's what I looked at. It. I thought, Okay, these guys are doing it through different mediums. I want to do this through the paintbrush. I want to do it through my style of painting. Um, and that would be my encouragement would be figure out what it is that you can do and work from that rather than telling yourself what it is that you can't do. Um, oftentimes what we can't do then becomes what we can do, but it takes time getting there. Um, if, if that answered your question at all, <laughs> at all I hope. Well, I think it does. So I think the fast action tip for this is stop comparing yeah. yourself to other people yeah. if all you are doing is yeah. nurturing your creative side. Yeah. We're not talking about how to become a world famous rich yeah. painter or 
or musician or writer at this point. We're just saying nurture that creative side in you because it bleeds out into well, nourishment for the rest of your life. Well, can also the other thing as well, because I spent a number of years as a teen comparing myself and almost trying to be someone else. And what I found out very quickly was when I was being that someone else, I was losing me um, in all of that. And that's the biggest danger I find for so many, particularly the young folk, is they want to be like the latest musician or the latest rock star, or the latest artist or whatever's out there. Um, and they end up losing what makes them special. I suddenly learned, because I mean, you know, from a, from a preaching standpoint, I like Charles Stanley. From an artist standpoint, as I've mentioned, uh, Bob Ross, Thomas King, et cetera, et cetera. From someone that inspires me, I've got other people. And it's almost like I'm built up of all these little different snippets now, but then I've had to take what they taught and build upon that because I, I wasn't just happy with just settling for what, you know, for other people. I was wanting to find out who I was and what I could do. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, let's get one more uh, fast action tip in here. That was good. Okay, I'm a burgeoning artiste <laughs> and I've got this little niggling feeling in me that I would like to start selling my artwork. Oh dear. How do I get started? Oh dear, dear, dear. Um, jokingly, when I say <laughs> to people, when they say to me, I said, don't, it's a, <laughs> it's a heck of a lot of work to do. No, seriously though. Um, how do you get started with that? I suppose you've got to get a clear idea of what it is that you want to do. I know it's something you and I have chatted about a lot, is getting really, really clear and precise about where you want to be and where you want to go with this. Um, so, okay, you've reached that stage now where you maybe, I'll just take landscapes because that's how I started out. You I suppose get in that mindset of, right, I'm, I'm now putting things out there to share and you start posting, Facebook's fantastic for this because you can just literally upload a photo and say, hey guys, this is what I'm working on. Can I get some mm -hmm. views and opinions or criticisms or constructive or, or whatever? Um, sometimes now it's just a case of sticking it up there on Instagram and you can share it through Instagram, Twitter and Facebook all in the one go and say, look, this is what I'm working at and watch for people's response. Um, get a clear idea as well. And I know I'm stealing your tips here <laughs> a little bit, Kat. Because you got to get a, that's fine. Yeah, you got to you got to get a clear idea about you know who it is that's going to buy your artwork. Like for me, I live in Scotland, as Kat mentioned at the top of the show, but I find my best client market is the United States or is Canada. Um, you know, I've known other artists from you know conversely from the United States that their most popular market is uh, the UK and Scotland. Um, so I'm just reading some of the comments down the side as well. So that that's the thing. You've just got to get a, a clear mind and a clear perspective and get help to do it. And that's something that I, I suppose would be my personal fast action tip would be get help and support in doing this. I mean, I, I, I you know, I've told people before, I said, I'm really thankful for the people I've got in my life because I realize not everyone has a business coach like what Kat is to me. Not everyone has people around them like Wendy uh, to support me. And all the others, uh, some of you guys I know uh, that are watching the show today. And Cindy, I know you and I have done a show um, a couple of years ago. And again, we've kept in touch loosely. Um, just you know, different ideas, different things, and finding what works for you. Because um, what works for me may not be what works for you. You know, I'm good in front of the camera. I can talk. I can you know do all that stuff. I know the people that can't. So you've got to really figure out what it is that works for you. So let's go to, um, we're wrapping up the first 15 minutes. So we've got, we've got your fast action tips, um, which the first one was about starting to nurture your yep. creative side. Just do it, yep. do whatever it takes, doodle. I mean, it, it's, you're doing it for you. You're not doing it with a mindset that this has to be sold yep. to legitimize myself as an artist and, and or a creative about person. It, you know, that's yeah, something just do it. Yeah. And um, the second one what referred to what if I'm not good enough? And it's again, that fast action tip, yeah. find a way to let that go. And logically we can do that. Sometimes we, like you mentioned, sometimes it helps to have somebody else to work us yeah. through that disconnect yeah. with ourselves. Usually if you have those feelings of I'm not good enough, it's tied to things in your past, maybe people, uh, 
telling you all the time you're growing up, you're not good enough, and you transfer that to your creative side. And the third one is how do I get started selling my artwork? And your tip was, if I'm going to summarize this correctly, and you correct me if I'm not, go with your passion first. Yes. What you like to draw or the music that you're creating or whatever you're writing, because this is creative side. You're, yeah. You do all of those things, uh, plus a few more. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the, cre the nurturing uh, is in there with all of them. Yeah. So find out what you like to do first, and then you kind of go finding your market yeah. for it. Yeah. And your market slowly finds you too, as opposed to um, just seeing what is selling out there and trying to duplicate that. That's okay. It. So that, that leads us right into a, a question from Cindy. Okay. And before I read Cindy's question, um, if you're here live, you can click on the um, seat where you'll see that famous little red tree, which is John's uh, signature, uh, one of his signature paintings. And if you click that, it'll take you right to his website. Uh, Cindy, um, how do you find out what people want? Do you just paint and try to sell it or ask or what? And she says, I take photos and know what I like, but now as I'm turning them into greeting cards, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what will sell. Yeah, that's that comes a lot of trial and error. Um, I tend to do a lot of Facebook um, promoting. And what I tend to do when I'm think when I'm thinking about who do I want to try and attract in this? Now I know what sells for me. Pets sell. In fact, I've got one down here. It's, it's almost like art attack. I, here's one I did earlier on. Um, this one, for example, I'm just trying to bring it out the light. There we go. That's a bit better. This one is one that I did earlier. Um, in fact, I did it yesterday. Um, and this kind of thing really draws people's attention. So if I'm um, Cindy, if I'm using your stuff, I'm looking for what's really going to draw people's attention. If I'm photographing landscapes, and you'll know this yourself, you look at it and think, mm -hmm. okay, that looks really nice, but would someone want to buy it? Um, is it of a special landscape? Is, is it of a special place? Painting is a lot easier to do than photography, so I don't envy you in, in that. Um, because painting for me, if, if there's a really good portrait out there that I've done, if there's a really good animal portrait, as we've just seen that I've done, and a landscape, and one with me uh, standing in, usually with my arms crossed and, you know, trying to look cool <laughs> and everything, it seems to be my signature post. Um, it gets people's attention because of the colors, because they look at it and think, wow, this is really, really unique. It's not something that, you know, everyone else is doing and everyone else is posting. Again, going back to that being unique um, thing that we said earlier on. Um, hey, Wendy, good to see you. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, so that would be my advice is it's a lot of trial and error. Now, that's when I'm posting on Facebook in terms of the groups. When I'm posting on my business page and my personal page, it's completely different because I look at what the response is then from the audience. When I get a response, uh, like what we had for the wedding photo yesterday, um, mm -hmm. for and I, that got over. He's a, he's a little over a year still yeah. newlywed. Yeah, so <laughs> it's about 18 months now, I think. Um, but that got, I think, nearly 500 likes and I think maybe over 120 comments the last time I checked. Um, it's those kind of things and it's how to engage with the audience. With the paintings, I'm always looking not only what's been liked the most, but what kind of styles people like, what kind of things the um, the feedback to, and what kind of things they don't really bother with. Um, and it's only over a period of maybe five years now, I think, after being on Facebook for that long, that I've kind of got a good idea now for what works and what doesn't. Um, some of the time I stay away from the things that don't work and work towards the things more that do. Um, hope that answers the question. Right, right. I think that that does really good. And Cindy's giving you props yeah, for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is her follow up to that. Um, I think there is a difference between the photos that I think will sell and what might sell yeah. as a greeting card. Yeah. And you're right. Speaking about you, yeah. um, people seem to love your animal paintings yeah. and the same with all graphics. That's and I wa also want to add to what you said about what you post on social media. Uh, in this case, we, we were talking about Facebook specifically. It's a lot like 
uh, a writer who is developing their following. It's one thing to get, oh, that's wonderful from your friends and family. Yeah. Okay, they're gonna love you regardless of what you put out there, even if it's not yeah. really good stuff, not commercial stuff. Yeah. So you have to take in, uh, into consideration of those 500 people that may have liked a particular painting. Exactly. Which ones are really prospects yeah. in terms of who would really like to have yeah. one of my paintings yeah. hanging on their house wall or their yeah. office wall or would like to purchase it for their corporate offices or would like to purchase it as a gift. Now you do something that has really upped your game in terms of matching what you like to paint most and understanding what would trigger that emotional response to a prospect. And that is helping to put people they love into the picture. Yeah. You want to describe that a little bit? I, th I think it's as, as simple as, as you literally described it there. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I, I use caution with this whenever people ask me to do it because there's some that I know work really well and there's others that I know don't. But if the client wants it at the same point, I, I, I've now got a, you know. Go ahead. I know the story. Go yeah. ahead and, and describe the one that was a complete flop from your point of view oh, there, that, there and that you didn't even want to do. Yeah, there was a couple. <laughs> um, Wendy and I were laughing a couple of weeks ago when she asked me the same question. Um, there was a couple that wanted, now if this is the one I'm thinking it at, this is just one I'm pulling off the top of my head. There was a couple that wanted me to paint them. Now that in itself, it sounds like a really nice story and everything else. However, when they then send me the photo and they're in their underwear and uh, basically, <laughs> it's the only way I can put it, it's start, their underwear, I'm, I'm assuming started off white at some point and it had just gotten very old and gray and nasty and everything else. And I'm sitting there thinking there ain't enough money in the world for me to sit to want to paint this. <laughs> Um, the thing was, they wanted it on a ginormous canvas as well. I'm thinking, by the end of it, I'm going to want to pluck my eyes out with spoons. It was that bad, and that's it just wasn't what, worth the money they were offering. No, I mean, it, they kept, you know, I kept putting the price up and up and up, and they kept, oh yeah, we'll pay that. I'm like, no. <laughs> so, but the, there are some that people have these ideas. I've just done one for a, a lady in Canada, and. Um, much to my discretion and much to me saying, look, this isn't going to work the way you want it. She wanted dogs um, uh, painting into a mountainscape. Now, it sounds fine, but the problem was the mountainscape was so busy uh, of the one that she gave me, and that's what she wanted doing. And there was four dogs on there, and I'm thinking this, and it was maybe a, a 10 by 12 or 12 by 16. I can't remember the exact size. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a really big canvas to get that much detail into. Um, and I looked at it at the end and I thought, if this had been me, would I have painted it this way? And the answer is no, but because that's really what she wanted and, you know, um, she keeps going back time and time again, I thought, okay, if that's what you really, really want, but you have to exercise caution as well as you get more renowned and more well-known because now, um, I've got to paint things that I want to put my name on. When people see it, I don't want them to sit there and think, what the heck was he thinking when he painted this? Um, right. <laughs> I want them to see it and say, yeah, that's a John Morris, and he's proud to put his name on that. Um, and it goes back to the whole branding thing. So, And one of the other things that I see is a really sweet trend coming out, and you're doing some of it. I've got some other artist friends, and I like it so much better than Photoshopping a person into a photograph, but putting, painting someone who's past or yeah. who may be away on extended visits into a portrait of the family yeah. or into a setting with the family or someone. So that that really works well. For those listening to the replay and not here alive, the Wendy we're talking about is the awesome <laughs> Wendy Manganero, who's a social media specialist and awesome uh, business uh, coach and consultant herself. We have a question from Chef Dennis. John, have you ever worked with food? And I'm going to make the assumption he means in terms of painting. Uh, there's, there's so many um, lines that this could take. Um, 
I've never painted food, if that's the question. Um, I've never, the, the best thing I do with food usually is eat it. Um, and I've never done the whole creative artwork because I know there are some artists out there that like to do the, uh, the creative stuff in making uh, shapes and, and almost artwork out of like pasta and beans and all these other things. Um, but no, I, I, it, painting food is not something that I've done, no. Ah. Um, Dennis, if you want to pop into um, more information into the chat about what you had in mind, like, uh, and I'm wondering if if you were to be given a plate of food or something, um, what like, I make well, he's a chef, so it may be something he wants, like on his banner or something. Yeah. Could you yeah. could you do an artistic rendering of? Well, certainly, yeah. Yeah. A, f a tablescape, I guess. I mean, I'm yeah, pretty sure that's what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Chef. <laughs> a tablescape. All right. And Wendy says, I can't wait until next month when you do mine. And I I'm think really he, she's talking about, he also has an awesome uh, blab show that she's moved from another platform. And I'm going to be a guest uh, later this uh, year. Um, and you know, or maybe she's talking about your actual painting because she yeah, also yeah, says I may yeah. get one for mom too. Yeah. It was her FB, which is Facebook cover photo up to last year. And her son is 10 now. She had that there for five years. So yeah, we are talking painting. So that's yeah, awesome. Indeed, yes, All right, we're coming, <laughs> we're coming up uh, close to the top of the hour. And I know people watching this replay are going to want to know what the red thing is behind you in your picture. I know what it is because I've known you for a long time and I know more about your background than most people do. So explain what that is and tell them just a little bit about that that side of you there. Yeah, it's, it's not something that I chat about a whole lot because I'm not usually asked to chat about it a whole lot. Um, that is a freestanding punch bag. And I use it a lot still for martial arts training. It's good still for wrestling, but I'm going to move the camera around a bit. And as you can see, um, I've also got my gym in there as well. And I definitely, definitely um, advise keeping fit and keeping in shape um, because it is, it's really important, again, um, to look after you because that's where the creativity starts. Um, when I'm doing photo shoots and things like that, it's really important for me to look and feel my best. Um, and maybe that's just a, a vain thing or what, but for me, if I'm, if I'm trying to teach other people to look after themselves, then I have to be the example as well. Um, and that's what keeps me going and keeps me motivated to, to teach this kind of stuff. So right. yeah, that, that's what that is. And I mean, just to look at you, people who don't know you are going to say, wow, this is a young good looking athletic looking guy but you come with your own medical challenges yeah. that have yeah. plagued you for quite a while yeah. so you've got your own struggles just as everyone yeah. does in life right yeah. i mean colitis for me is something that's part of the reason that cat and i ended up working together was because again i had to work from home for a lot of the time um and you know i mean it was just a lot of just cool things that lined up one by one um, then getting married, my wife really loves to cook and she knows what my issues with colitis. So she really watches, um, you know, what I can eat and what I can't eat. And the really cool thing now is to be able to train and to eat and to be for me bigger. Um, and you know, not to be worrying too much about, um, about colitis. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's definitely, yeah, something, you know, I, I look after myself and, uh, and, and, and try to, to keep big, so, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Our chef says he thought it was a tank of nitrous oxide. <laughs> he can be so funny sometimes. No, no, right. I, <laughs> I have just popped into the chat, uh, which should be available on the replays. So some links for both my yeah. Facebook page. Um, the I'm going to put the Facebook group in again. John's. Uh, Facebook. Um, I've already put in the link, direct link to you on uh, for your website, as well as mine, because the nice little picture we can see sitting here live will not be there on the replay. Any final words to wrap up? What 
I guess what just, would you share with us? You know, just thank you very much for the opportunity for me to share with you guys a little bit because 30 minutes went really, really quickly. Um, just a little bit about of what we do and, you know, the work that we do. And there's so much more that we could have thrown in there, I know. Um, but please do get in touch because I love to, uh, to to meet with folk. I love to chat with folk and to learn from them as well as to uh, to teach as well. So definitely keep nurturing that creative side. And I hope, you know, something of what we've said today um, has really made an impact on you. Right. And if you want something free from John, go visit his yeah. website, John Morris Art from the Heart dot com. And you can uh, see a little bit more of his other artistic side because he's a singer, songwriter, and you can download a free uh, song. Right. Yeah, One of the ones she said. That so that's uh, great. Definitely so check. thank you so much for being here Appreciate with me today. Upcoming on our next Fast Action Friday show is Stephanie L.H. Callahan. And uh, yeah. watch for those uh, information and what the topic will be. This is Kat Sturtz from rockingyourpath.com and ending this episode of Fast Action Friday. Thanks so much for being with me, John. And thanks everybody that was here live. And we'll see you on the replay as well. Bye.